Hi, uh, in this video I'm just going to show you how you can work with the uh, form builder uh, uh, that's built into your uh, your website. So uh, if you're logged in, you'll see the toolbar at the top. Just go to my my sites and then your agency, that your, whatever your website's called, and then go to the dashboard. And then in the dashboard, in the menu, go down to forms, and then dashboard. And then you'll see the forms here. We've got a registration form but maybe we want to add a, a contact form uh, so you can go just click that create button or you can click here forms and you can see the forms here and you can click create here as well so either way so you can there's some pre-built ones but let's go for a blank one click continue i'm going to call this contact form and click create And then we need to insert some fields. So you can click this insert fields here or just click the insert fields thing here, either way. And you've got different types of fields. You have a name field, an email field, phone address, website, like a, just a blank sort of input, which you can customize, text area, radio uh, things, check boxes, you know, select boxes, you know, drop downs, file uploads, and so on and so forth. Um, so we're just gonna go with a simple name one and an email and a phone and a consent um, and maybe a message as well uh, which will be a text area so let's insert that and in the name field we're going to edit that and we're going to do multiple and we're going to get rid of the prefix so the prefix would be like a, you know mr mrs that sort of thing but i don't know i think it's a bit old-fashioned these days first name it's fine, middle name, don't want that, and last name. So it's just gonna show first name and last name fields. And then if you open up that, you've got the label and the placeholder. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna um, sort of apply this and, and publish this. So anyway, we're gonna, I'm just going to show you what that form looks like in its basic form for, for a minute. So you've got this um, short code here, which it gives you. So if we just copy that, uh, if you ever need to copy the short code, you can get it from up here as well. Copy short code, and we're going to go to the contact page on the website, and we're going to add that short code to the contact page and that is where, where we want the form to go. So if we click the Let's Talk button up here in this this example. And then we click edit with Rexart's page builder. This will open up the front end editor so that we can uh, put the short code where we want it to go. So I'm going to close this and I'm just going to click that and create a text block. And I'm going to replace this dummy text with the short code that I've copied into my clipboard. I'm going to save that close that and there's that field so I'm just going to update the page I'm going to close that okay so there's that um, probably <laughs> need to move the consent below here um, but anyway a quick way to edit the form is anyway so so we need to move this below the message and also um probably yeah i'm happy with the i'll probably change the um placeholder for the phone number because uh, i'm based in the uk and that's an american number um and a quick way to edit the uh the form is just once you're logged in and you're looking at a form you can click edit form Not only you'll see that when you're logged in uh people that aren't logged in like your users won't, won't see that so we're going to move the consent below the text box um, and you can move these fields around so if you wanted you know you can add them next to each other like that you can swap them around um, you can do lots of different things um, okay so it's in the phone number I'm going to edit that Going to change that to uh, plus four, four. Let's 
do that. Apply that. Um, but you can, if you wanted to, you could, um, you know, remove the placeholders. So there is no placeholder. Or you could, instead of having the label, uh, you could remove the label from here and just put the the email address. Um, what would be the label into the placeholder. So sometimes people like to not have labels on fields and just to use placeholders, that, that, that's perfectly fine. In this case, we're using a label and a placeholder. Um, anyway, so we're gonna update that. And that will be reflected on the front end. In the consent box, um, normally you would add a link to your privacy and terms, perhaps. Um, if you click the text box here, you can change the the URL, if you want to, where that goes to. So this currently goes to the privacy policy, the um, the uh, terms and conditions has it hasn't got a URL going to it, so you could change that to terms or, or whatever the your terms URL is, uh, and update that. There's various sort of stylings you can do. So if you go into the appearance tab, you can make you can change it. To default which is like these fields with like a border around it or flat so it sort of removes the border or bold so it has quite a strong border or material so it, it um, just has a line underneath it's quite minimal I, I quite like the flat one so I'm going to update that in the behavior tab um, this is after submission what, what happens so this one shows you an inline message so if we edit that you can change that message. So currently it says, thank you for contact, contacting us. We'll be in touch shortly. You could change that for uh, whatever you want. If you wanted to, you could redirect the user. So you could put in the URL uh, of a page um, and say whether it opens up in the same tab or a new tab. Um, so that when they submit the form, it redirects them to a particular page. And that could be a thank you page um, where it might have other, other things. One reason why you might want to do a thank you page is if you are using Google Analytics and you want to track um, how many people submit a form, then what you might do is you might set up a goal in Google Analytics with this, the URL that you're going to, the thank you page URL. And then, um, then when someone submits the form, they get redirected to the thank you page. And if you set that thank you page URL as a goal in Google Analytics, and it'll track how many people do that, and it'll work out conversions and things, so how many people visited the page where the form is on, and then how many people then submitted the form, and it shows you how effective that particular form is. Um, so if you're finding that the conversion rate is quite low, maybe you need to improve the, the copy uh, or, or make the form simpler, perhaps, or something, uh, just to make it more effective. Um, one one other thing you could do sometimes in the inline message, um, what some of my clients do is they might have a link to a download. So the form itself could be on some sort of landing page and it could be saying, hey, check out the latest salary survey or check out the latest, you know, uh, download a brochure or something and um, complete this form to get this valuable information or this, this PDF that, you know, that we can give you. And... Um, if they submit the form and then it shows you the thank you message in the thank you message you might say thanks for you know completing the form here's your download and then you just hyperlink the download or highlight the download and click this link icon and paste the url uh, of where that document is it could be uh, an external document somewhere uh, in you know google drive or something or it could be in the media library so if you go to the media library you might have uploaded that document into there so you just need to copy the url uh, the file url from the media library and paste that into the url uh, there other behaviors you might want to do um, you can do conditions so you could say for example um, you know if you know um, so for example conditions might be um, in a field if you have um, a, you could have a <clears throat> you could have a drop down where the drop down says what they're interested in. So it could be um, you know different options, and then in the behavior conditions, it could be if whatever drop down has this particular um, thing selected, then it will redirect to or show them a different thank you message or redirect them to a different page. So you can do certain so, so things like that. Um, 
You can also, um, in email notifications, um, this is where, where, if someone submits the form, uh, it um, where, where that goes to. So you can put recipients and then put the email address of where that goes to. So, you know, who gets notified when that form is submitted. Um, and uh, you can change the, the text that is on there. Um, you can also do email, email routing. So email routing might be, let's say you've got a thank you page and, no, sorry, a contact page. And um, on the contact page, it has, um, you know, a, an option that's a, a drop down that says, what are you interested in? And one of those options could be, you know, I'm a candidate and looking for work. And another option could be, I'm an employer looking to hire or whatever. And the email routing, uh, you could add rules to say, if, you know, what you're looking for drop down is, you know, I'm a candidate, then the any a certain email is sent to someone who looks after candidates, for example. And if it's a client, then the email notification could go to whoever looks after new clients and so on and so forth. Um, so, or it could be the drop down has, you know, where's your nearest office? And it could be you know, Manchester, London, Liverpool, whatever. And um, depending on what option they chose, the notification email might go to the person at that particular office that looks after certain things. Um, so that you know, there's quite a few um, sort of things you can do uh, in the integrations. Um, we've got various integrations. So if you go to integrations tab down here, um, we, we you can integrate with you can create a webhook and that integrates with things like Zapier and so on as these automation tools. Um, so you could do that. An example might be if you were using a CRM that has um, a Zapier integration, Z Zap, then for example, you could create the form, um, create the webhook, and then that webhook, you could create the webhook not, uh, in Zapier, and then connect that webhook to the uh, CRM Zap. And therefore, when someone submits a form, that submission goes into the CRM via, via uh, Zapier. So you could do that, but it's quite advanced, so you might need some help with that. Um, you could uh, integrate MailChimp. So for example, you could do a contact form or form that has like, um, you know, first name, email, and uh, in, all in one line. And then when someone submits it, that goes into a list in MailChimp, or it could go into you know, Google Sheets or, or Slack or HubSpot maybe, or, or so on. Or it could be um, that you want, you've got a, a mail list in, you know, Active Campaign or, or, or um, Campaign Monitor or, or, or something like that. Um, could go into a Trello board, which might be interesting. Uh, so you could do that. So there's different integrations that you can do. And once you've activated these integrations, um, you could then go back to the form, go to the Integrations tab, and then select that integration. Um, and then there's reports as well. So um, if you choose the particular form that someone uh, that, that you've got, you can view reports and those reports are, you know, how many submissions and how many views and that sort of thing. Um, and also there's um, the submissions themselves. Um, so you could um, choose a, um, a form and you could view the uh, submissions. Um, there isn't any submissions currently in this form. So, so that there's a you know a brief overview of using forms. Um, one thing I should say if I, we go back to the website. Oh, uh, sorry. If we go back to the forms, is you can also of course uh, style the forms. Um, so if we go to this contact form and and uh, edit. go to appearance and we can also change the colors uh, of all the different elements commonly it would be the submit button uh, don't forget to change the default and hover and the, and the focus one change the background color and the text color you can change the fonts uh, of all the different elements and the form container padding and border and spacing and the, and, the, and you can even add your own css if you wanted to as well so that's custom styling um, if, if you wanted to do that. And what, whenever you make these changes, just click uh, update and then uh, the, we'll, we'll, wherever the short code is placed on the uh, website, it will automatically update, update that. Um, another thing you could do is um, 
you could do minimal styling on the form itself. Uh, but what you could do, you could create styling sort of um, on the page where the form is. So a typical way of example of this would be if we go to the contact page here where we've got this form, um, what you could do is you could add that form into a an inner row in, in this example. So if we click this particular row and then create an inner row, so we've got an inner row here, and we just grab this text box where we've got the short code and put it into the um, the inner row. So it sometimes can be a bit tricky. Uh, there you go. So that's in the inner row now. Uh, and then you could style the inner row. So for example, you could click the inner column, um, go to background, and change this to say um, black. And now you can see, or just about, you can see that the form is in a black background, for example. And what you could do is you could change the padding. So you could go, go to general and then column padding, make that say 3%. So now it's sort of got in, in like a bit of padding. Uh, and you could also uh, change the border radius, so make the corners a bit more rounded. So um, go down to border radius, make that say 10. You could do a little box shadow if you wanted to. Um, close that. There you go, so got nice little borders now. You know, that's just one, one example of, of, of what you might want to do. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.